it's Alice and today we are going to do a classics TBR but it's going to be a reread TBR because I have actually read all of these before. Now you might know that I'm not a huge rereader. I don't really do it a lot but I'm getting better at it and I had a little think at the beginning of this year like what books I would like to reread this year and most of them were actually classics so here we are. I don't know what it is about rereading for me. I think there's a part of me that's a little scared of it and so I don't do it as much because I think I'm scared that I won't have the same experience or like as good of an experience the second time I read a book. A lot of the books that I would like to reread are like books that I consider some of my favorite books and I'm scared that if I reread them I won't feel the same way about them and so I sort of avoid it a little bit but then I also know that when I do reread a book and it's a favorite and it's just as good the second time that's like a completely different high and that makes my favorite books like even more my favorite books if that makes sense and so I want that as well and that does require actually doing <laughs> some rereading. I also realized that a lot of the classics that I consider to be my favorite classics I read ages ago. Like a lot of these books I read like seven, eight, nine, even sometimes ten years ago, sometimes even more than that, and that's a huge chunk of my life. Like if I read it ten years ago, that's basically a third of my life, <laughs> and that's a long time. And I feel like I've changed and grown a lot since then, and I've read a lot more since then, and so I think rereading these books could be kind of like an interesting experience, and I wonder if I'll get other stuff out of those books now than I did then. So I've picked out a stack of classics and we're just gonna go through them. The first one that I have is a book that I read in high school and I think it was around like 2008-2009 which that's like 13-14 years ago and let me tell you that makes me feel some kind of way and I don't know if I like it, <laughs> but nevertheless the book is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I feel like this is a book that a lot of people read in like their high school years or like in school and we read this for English class and the thing I think is really interesting about this book is that this is the first book that I read where I really actively like saw the value of discussing a book while you're reading it and also after you're reading it because we obviously talked about this for class. For those of you who don't know this is a dystopian novel and it's about a group of boys who are stranded on this island and I don't remember a whole lot about what happens in this book. I remember the kid with the glasses and I remember that I just felt a lot of things when I was reading this book and a cool thing about this is that I feel like this is one of the first dystopian novels that I read and I feel like this is this is what sparked my interest in that genre and it's one of my favorite genres now and it's kind of cool that that all started in my high school English class. I think it could be interesting to reread this and just see how I feel and think about it now that I'm almost twice as old as when I first read this book and hopefully I have a slightly more developed brain and I have more in here that will probably affect how I feel about it but I think it could be interesting. Also, while we're here talking about my high school English classes, shout out to my high school English teacher who was amazing and I'm pretty sure she occasionally stops by this channel, which I think is very cool and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Secondly, we have got a book that I'm really looking forward to rereading. It's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and I remember when I first read this, I was so intimidated by it and it was one of the first like big serious like very well-known classics that I wanted to read and I picked it up and I was very very intimidated. I was worried that I was going to struggle with the language but I flew through this book and I remember thinking wow this is like surprisingly easy to read and I just fell in love with it. In here we follow the life of Jane Eyre from the time when she grows up in this orphanage to when she gets to Mr. Rochester's house and there's a bunch of stuff going on there. I remember a lot of the main plot points and I think I've seen like some movies and adaptations and stuff since I read this book but like the thing that I remember the most from the actual like reading experience of reading this was Jane. Like I just loved reading about her and I loved just 
following her throughout her life. This is probably the one book on this list that I'm least worried about rereading because I'm 99% certain that I'm gonna love this just as much on a reread. I just think meeting Jane again is gonna be like meeting someone that you know that you haven't seen in a long time but you're just really excited to see them again and I think I'm gonna love it. I think it's gonna be a wonderful time even if there are some really sketchy things going on in this book but for such a long book we do need a little bit of drama. Next we have got one of these books that blew my mind when I read it. Like I don't know if I've ever read a book that has made me think more than this book but when I think about it now, I have forgotten quite a lot of it, I think. It's 1984 by George Orwell, which again is a classic dystopia novel. And again, dystopia just does it for me. And I just remember when I read this book and I was like reading it, I was just like, oh my god. I remember some of the things that this book taught me and I remember a lot of the concepts, but I don't remember how it taught me these things. And I think it would be good to have a refresher. I don't remember a lot of the plot and I don't really remember the main character, but I think this book does a really good job of showing us the dangers of a totalitarian regime. And I remember loving how it talked about propaganda and it introduces or explains this idea of doublethink, which is what it's called in this book, which is when a person holds two conflicting beliefs in their head all at once and they like truly believe both of those things even though you can't really combine them which i think is fascinating and something that everyone should understand i've said this for years and i'm sure that rereading this is just gonna solidify it but i really think that this is a book that everyone should read even if it is a little bit of a challenge because i've just never read a book that has opened my eyes in the same way and it's just so good and there's a reason it's considered one of the, the big classics. Also, side note, this book has one of my favorite, if not my favorite, opening line of any book. Like, if I was gonna get a literary quote <laughs> tattooed on my body, which I kind of want to, this is in my like top three. It says, it was a bright cold day in April and the clocks were striking. 13. That is just so good. <laughs> Another book that has a great opening line that I'm sure you're familiar with is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which is my favorite Jane Austen. Or is it? <laughs> it has been so long since I read this book. It's been over 10 years. And so I don't know if that's really true anymore. I think that it's still gonna be my favorite, but I am doubting myself a little bit because I remember when I read this, I like I picked this up and it was one of the first, like again, it was one of the first classics that I read in English. I picked it up and I struggled so much with the language. I really had a hard time getting through it and I literally couldn't understand what I was reading. And the thing that got me through it is that I read a third and I was like, I have no idea what I just read. I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know anything. I watched a movie adaptation. I watched the, the 2005 adaptation of this, which is still my favorite adaptation, which I know not everyone agrees with, but I love that adaptation. I watched that and I went back and started the book again. And that really, really helped me because I think that just helped me realize who the people were and somehow I like managed to get through this by like watching the movie and then reading it. I actually love that movie so much that I watch it maybe like five to ten times a year. It's one of my comfort movies and I just think it's so so good but nevertheless I remember I finished this book and I was like it's amazing and I gave it five stars but I wonder if a part of me <laughs> loving this book so much was that I managed to finish it and I was very happy with myself that I managed to get through it. I wonder if that colored some of my 
opinion of this book back then but now I'm like very familiar with the story and I still think I'm gonna love it and I think I'm gonna like actually really enjoy it when I reread it because I've read some Jane Austen novels recently like I read Emma last year and the language was a breeze now so I think it's gonna be a lot better and I think it's still gonna be my favorite Jane Austen but who knows. Then, of course, I have to reread Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which again, it's one of my favorite books, but again, I read it like seven years ago. But I really think I'm gonna love rereading this because I, I sort of know what happens in the book and so I know what to expect so I can just enjoy it. I think that's kind of an interesting thing. Like sometimes when you know what to expect with a book, it's easier to enjoy it. And I think rereading for me that's one of my favorite things about rereading is that i know what happens and so i can just sort of relax a little bit more and just go with the flow and enjoy the story and i usually pick up more things the second time around i think especially with this having read it before is gonna be great because i always say this when i recommend this book the first part of this book is rough to get through <laughs> and Honestly, and maybe this is controversial, I think you can just skim the first like part of this because you read from the perspective of this one person first and then Dr. Frankenstein and then the monster. And the first bit is from this other person and he's like a captain and you don't really need to read that whole thing. I think it's a little bit long and you can kind of just look up a summary and skip that part or just skip it. I've heard someone describe this book as an onion and I feel like that's a great way to explain it because it has a lot of layers when it comes to the narration. So the outer layer is this captain and it's worth getting through that part to get to like the better parts in the middle of the onion. I don't know if the middle of the onion is really the best part of the onion but you know what I mean. There's like the outer layer which is the captain and then there's you have to like go through that to get to the center and it's definitely worth it. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> but I feel like because I know what to expect with that first part, I can get through it more easily than I did the first time. The things that I remember the most about this book is like the middle part where we read from the perspective of the monster, which was my favorite. It's so atmospheric. And I think rereading this when it's fall and it's like, Preferably it would be like dark and it would be there would be lightning and thunder and rain. Oh, it would just be amazing. I am gonna keep this like until fall to reread it, I think, because it's so gothic and so like fall and autumnal for me. Maybe even late summer actually, because I think part of the story takes place in summer. I don't know, but I am gonna reread this this year hopefully. Second to last, we have got Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This is one of those books that I am actually quite nervous about rereading because I read loads of Thomas Hardy for like a couple of years and I just loved it and then I just completely kind of forgot about it and I really don't know how I'm gonna feel about these books now. This was definitely my favorite out of the ones that I read by Thomas Hardy and I remember this book gave me like a feeling of it always being golden hour which is like when the light is really pretty and i remember the scenery in here was just described so beautifully and i do like that's the part that i remember the most but i also remember loving the main character i thought she was really interesting and she comes into contact with three different men and one of them i don't remember but like i remember one of them is just absolutely batshit. And then there's Farmer Oak, which who can forget about Farmer Oak? I think worst case scenario would be like, I give this book four stars on a reread instead of five. But I also feel like it has a potential to like blow me away one more time. So, you know, I'm gonna try it. I have chosen this one over Tess of the Gerbervilles because I think that if I reread that book, I would low-key kind of hate it. So we're gonna try this one instead. <laughs> Lastly, we have a book that I don't have a physical copy of. I remember when I read it, I borrowed it from a friend and it was over like, again, over like 10 years ago. 
and it's the book Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. And this is a science fiction classic that I don't really ever hear anyone talk about. I've never heard anyone else mention this book, but I remember I read it and it like really threw me off with how good it was. I went into that book not knowing what to expect and it just totally blew me away. The story is about a man who has quite a low IQ and he takes part in this experiment to enhance human intelligence. And that is really all I want to say about this book because I think one of the reasons I loved it so much the first time was that I didn't know what to expect. So I think that's enough to go into it with. And one of the things that I remember about this book is that it's written in a really interesting way. It's written from the perspective of this main character. And in the beginning of the book, he doesn't really know how to write very well. And he writes the way that he thinks and the way that he speaks. And like, there's no punctuation and it's kind of all over the place, but you do understand it. And then he takes part of this experiment and the writing changes. And that just did so much for me. I think the way it's written combined with a lot of the discussions that are in that book just made it really impactful for me. But I do think one of the reasons I loved it so much was that I was really surprised by it. So I wonder how it's gonna be like the second time around, but I think it could be really interesting to reread. I do also feel like I remember I teared up quite a lot at the end and I wonder if I'll do that the second time. I kind of feel like I will. Okay everyone, those were all the books that I had to show you today and it does feel like a little bit of an ambitious TBR for the year because I don't read that many classics but I think maybe the classics that I read this year are gonna be these ones and I'm just gonna focus on rereading. I don't know, I just really wanna reread these and I'm gonna try to not get distracted by other classics. Now, I'd love to know if you are a huge rereader, or maybe if you're not, I would love to hear why. Maybe you have the same fears as me. And I would also love to know if you have a reread TBR for this year. As always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you soon. Bye!